Now, a constant theme of the entire Bible is the divine providence of God and his control over every aspect of reality, but it especially jumps off the pages in this chapter. Anti-Calvinists have terrible trouble reconciling the fact that evil men remain accountable for their acts while still acting in perfect accord with the plan of God. But whether or not you are able to fully understand this apparent paradox, it is abundantly clear throughout this chapter that despite the crucifixion of Christ being the most horrific injustice ever perpetrated in history, and despite men acting according to their own desires and failings, every single minute aspect is all according to the perfect plan of God. God does not just foresee what will occur, he is carefully orchestrating everything. We will see this in its most profound example with Judas's betrayal. But we already have it right here in the very beginning of the chapter. Revelation 13.8 tells us that Jesus is the Lamb of God slain before the very foundation of the world. Does this mean that it physically occurred then? Obviously not. First, if the world was not founded yet, there was no such things as mass or speed, so there was also no such thing as time. People misunderstand prophecy and metaphysics when they try to place an infinite God inside our physical perception of time. When we look at prophecy, God consistently states future events as though they have already occurred. This is because he is sovereign and he is in control. Whatever he declares to be will be because he will ensure that it comes to pass. He does not restrict himself to the major details such as when Jesus will be crucified. He directs even minor details such as how the disciples will find the upper room for the Last Supper. Jesus is the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, so it is only appropriate that he be sacrificed in conjunction with the Passover which foreshadowed this final sacrifice. Throughout Jesus' entire ministry, from his very first sermon in Nazareth, people have been attempting to kill him. If you want to go back even further, you could cite Herod pursuing him as a child. Yet, in every instance, Jesus would escape. If Jesus had come to die, then why bother escaping in these prior instances? Well, Ecclesiastes tells us there is a time for all things. And as Galatians 4.4 explains, Jesus' incarnation was meticulously timed to just the exact right point in history. And yes, the Greek and Roman empires which preceded it were instrumental in setting the stage. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Jesus had been preparing his disciples for their great commission over the past three years. So there was nothing the world could do to foil his plans. But ironically, now that his time was at hand, those who had been trying to murder him all this time wanted to delay it. But once again, we see that they were not the ones in control. God's perfect Passover lamb would, once and for all, spill his blood so that the angel of death could pass over his chosen people for the rest of eternity. So the scene is set, and every actor will play their part. 